But you've have you been mobbed before? You have. Oh yeah. What's been the worst? Oh, one of the big ones was uh, about a uh, trans fighter. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, that was a hilarious one. Yeah. Because I'm like, well, you guys can kiss my fucking ass. You're out of your mind. You guys are out of your mind if you think that a man who has been a man for 30 years and has taken female hormones for two is the same. Mm -hmm. You put Brock Lesnar, chop his dick off and put him in a dress. <laughs> that guy's going to maul through the women's heavyweight division like nothing you've ever seen in your life. Yeah. Because we're built different. And yeah. it's just a fact. And anyone who tries to argue that is crazy. And there are, there, there's certainly standouts in terms of women who are uh, like mu much more muscular, higher bone density, particularly African American women, a very high bone density. Um, but there's a different shape to their hips. There's, uh, there's the, the size of the hands, the size of the shoulders. It's, things are different. Mm -hmm. the, and also, the imprinting of years and years of testosterone. It's just. There was a great article by this uh, <clears throat> board-certified endocrinologist who went over all of the all the things that separate men from women, yeah, which should exclude one. them from competing in combat sports mm -hmm. against women. And this woman was called a transphobe, and mm -hmm. I mean, she's a fucking endocrinologist, yeah. you idiot. She's talking about the science, and she's also talking about the science of. One of the things they talk about is how women, you know, or a uh, trans woman, once they transition to being a woman, they're basically biologically almost exactly the same as women. She was like, no, Th not only that, but the bone density is retained mm -hmm. by taking estrogen, which is what the problem with women when they have osteoporosis mm -hmm. is they, they lose, they're losing estrogen, they lose bone mass. Well, the estrogen actually helps you retain bone mass. Mm -hmm. So when a man transitions to a woman and then starts taking estrogen, it's actually helping retain the bone mass that he would have lost by not having testosterone. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, reaction times, the re reaction times are several tenths of a second faster in general for women than they are for, e or for men rather than they are for even professional athlete women. Mm -hmm. So all these, all these variables yeah. that need to be taken into consideration when you're allowing someone to do a sport, and we're not just talking about bike racing, we're not talking about, you know, something where someone... Non-contact. Yeah, we're talking about the most contact. We're talking about fucking fighting. There's, there's benefits that certain people have. There's, there's physical attributes that... Pe there's variables inside the genders, right? There, there's some men that have gigantic physical advantages over other men. Mm -hmm. And all of those are taking into you, you you there's no like even playing field when it comes to even intergender competition mm -hmm. or, or you know male versus male competition there's no real level playing field so the best we can do is say okay well you guys got to be the same weight you know right. let's just make that yeah. make it the same weight and that's as close as you can get but but even in that there's people that are just physically they're just they're just going to be better yeah. there's no there's no getting around it there's going to be better athletes there's they're, they're going to have better genetics you know, there's nothing you do about that. But one thing we can do is we can keep women from getting beaten up by men mm -hmm. and, and men who transition to being women. And if you think that's fair, you're fucking crazy. You know, it's just not. It doesn't make, doesn't make any sense. And the arguments for it are so shitty and so they're so riddled with progressive speak mm -hmm. that they're trying to pretend that this is a woman now. This is not a woman. This is a trans woman. Mm -hmm. This is a male. She has a Y chromosome. She transitioned to being a female. Now she's a trans woman. And if you choose to fight her and you're a woman, and you know that she's a trans woman, I'm totally fine with that. But that was not what was going on here. What was going on here was this woman, who used to be a man for 32 years, transitioned to being a woman, and it didn't tell anybody. Mm. And yeah. fought two different women yeah. who thought they were fighting a woman, mm -hmm. and got fucking smashed. Badly injured, yeah. Well, I was watching it, it was like watching a man fight a woman. Mm -hmm. That's what I was watching. I was like, this isn't like particularly, she wasn't particularly skillful. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like she had like some uh, unbelievable background in judo, like Ronda Rousey or something like that. It wasn't that. Mm -hmm. You were just w literally watching a former man beat up women mm -hmm. who yeah. never had the, the benefit of 30 years plus of testosterone in their body. What do you think the solution should be then? I don't know, but I was fascinated by watching the the mob come after me for that one. Yeah. I was like, "You, guys, this is this is adorable." Mm -hmm. But what was fascinating about it was, here's something that I I mean I'm not a physio I'm not, I'm not a real expert in physiology 
or endocrinology, but I'm a martial arts expert mm -hmm. and I've been doing it my whole life. Like I know the difference. I've, I've trained with women world champions and watched them get mauled by men who are not very good. Mm -hmm. It's just a fact, yeah. especially when it comes to striking. You know, there's more of a gap in jujitsu, or, or, or the, the gap rather closes in jujitsu because skill and technique take precedent over physical strength. But God damn it, when it comes to striking, you could get a man who's been doing it for six months, but just happens to have a lot of fast twitch muscle fiber and it just knows how to hit things hard, and he he'll fuck a woman up. It's not good, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to kickboxing and kicking mm -hmm. and punching. There's so there's so many advantages. And to, to say that those advantages are immediately cut out of the picture as soon as you transition to being a woman and within two years you should be able to fight women in a cage and not tell them that yeah. you're a woman. I was like, this is insanity. Yeah. So that was the, that was the big mob that came after me. Hmm. I think it's interesting that in this, because it is pitting people who would call themselves feminist against transgender activists. And yes. it's, it's basically women are being lost in the mix. So you can't say certain things like, when, on what planet would it be okay for someone who is born male to fight a woman? But in this case, because this person who's born male identifies as female, you can't call that into question. It, and it, it also, there was a real problem in Texas the other way, mm -hmm. where they're, they're, what they were doing is being prejudiced against trans people to the point where they wouldn't let a girl transitioning to being a boy wrestle with boys. Yeah. They made her wrestle with girls while she was taking testosterone. testosterone. Yeah. It's like, you guys are out of your fucking mind. <laughs> Like, you, you're not even recognizing that she wants to compete with boys, which is a disadvantage for her mm -hmm. or him now. Yeah. Let him compete with boys because this is a different thing. Mm -hmm. But then even then, a lot of boys are saying, well, look, I'm not taking testosterone. I just have testosterone. What if her testosterone mm -hmm. is higher than my testosterone because right. she's taking exogenous testosterone? This is kind of crazy. Like, yeah. It's, there's a lot of new ground that's going on here. My concern as a, a martial arts expert is when you are using ideology to push this, this progressive notion that you know a, a trans woman is exactly the same as a woman and you're getting women beat the fuck up because of it. Mm -hmm. And this is what I felt, and this is what I saw. And they went after me hard for like a year or two, but then it all went away. What's the worst thing they said about you? I don't know. I didn't read it. <laughs> I didn't read it. I read yeah. a little bit of it, and then I was like, I, it really didn't even hurt my feelings. Yeah. Because I was like, it's just so stupid. It's like, do you know a woman who's got a hand that looks like that? <laughs> yeah. Find one. Find one. Because if I took estrogen, I'd still have these. Mm -hmm. And that's not fair. Yeah. It's just not. I don't care. I don't care what anybody says. It's just not. Mm -hmm. I mean, even a woman with big hands, they're not that big. They're not like Brock Lesnar's mm -hmm. hands. Is it, there's a difference. There's a fucking difference. Yeah. There's a difference in the shape of the jaw. There's a difference in... So, there's so many differences in men to women. And there's so many women that used to be men that transition to being women that are now dominating these sports and these women feel like they're being fucked over mm -hmm. like weightlifting there was this australian weightlifter who's a trans oh, yeah. woman who's competing as a woman and is fucking breaking records yeah. left and right and everybody's like this is crazy she's an inspiration yeah. no she's a guy she used to be a guy and now she's breaking these women's records like uh, what are we doing this is crazy yeah but to play devil's advocate um did please do didn't fallon fox get beaten by ashley, ashley evan, evan smith. smith yeah yeah because she sucks <laughs> that's really what it is yeah. ashley evan smith is good okay so she's yeah. so good she listen there's a lot of women that would beat a lot of men yeah M women who are not taking anything mm -hmm who would beat a lot of men. And it's happened. Um, uh, 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 Jermaine Durandamy, mm. who uh, was a, a super high level women's MMA fighter is, uh, won the 145 pound world title, beat Holly Holm. She fought a man in a kickboxing bout and knocked him out. It's because she's a fucking beast. Yeah. It's she's really good and really technical, super strong. And just much better mm -hmm. than a guy who wasn't on her level. But she's just super exceptional. Mm -hmm. But there's also women who fought men who were world champions who got knocked out. Who, well, there was a woman from, god damn it, 
she was uh, a female boxer from Holland. Her name escapes me right now. She was, she was a woman that they were always trying to ma match her up with Christy Martin back when Christy Martin, the coal miner's daughter, was a famous. God damn it! Why can't I remember her name? But she was a, an elite female boxer, and she got knocked out by a man. It was ugly. Mm -hmm. And the guy she knocked out, the guy who knocked her out, really wasn't very good. Yeah. He just clanged her on the jaw and, and KO'd her. But it was, it was disturbing to watch. Yeah. But somehow it wasn't disturbing when Jermaine Durand and me knocked out the guy. Mm -hmm. Then it was like, yeah, go girl. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, you can't, you're always going to have people that are higher level skill. And Ashley Evan Smith, who's competed successfully in the UFC, she's very tough. Mm -hmm. And she beat Fallon Fox. Yeah. And this isn't, you know, I'm not against Fallon Fox fighting women that want to fight her. I'm not against that. Mm -hmm. If they want, I, I'm not against women fighting men. Mm -hmm. If you want to do, I'm not a man. Yeah. I'm not against people riding bulls. I'm not <laughs> against people bungee jumping. Yeah. I should be able to do whatever do what the fuck want. you want. But don't pretend that you're exactly the same as a biological woman. Yeah. Well, why the fuck do we have tests then? Why, I mean, why, what is a, what is a chromosome? Mm -hmm. What are genetics? Mm -hmm. What are, what is it? Is yeah. it all, we're just going to give it all away for ideology? And what about women? Yeah. Like what this idea of being completely progressive and and looking at things and and promoting equality, that's wonderful. But are you promoting equality for women? Mm -hmm. Like what about the women? What about a woman like you? What about a woman who's uh, uh, slight mm -hmm. and thin? What what are you supposed to do? Yeah. What, how much do you weigh? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> you're very thin. I'm thin though. Okay, yeah. Okay, let's pretend you're in the 105 pound weight class. Yeah. Do you feel like you can compete with a 105 pound man? Uh, no. That seems yeah. This seems ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, it seems to me that we have to accept the fact that there's some physical differences when the consequences are being gravely injured. Mm -hmm. And this is what martial arts are all about. I'm trying to hurt you. Mm -hmm. And I shouldn't have natural physical advantages that come from having a Y chromosome and 30 plus years of testosterone mm -hmm. in my body. That just seems to be obvious to me. Yeah. And I didn't understand why. But that was a hill that I was ready to die on. <laughs> I was like, you guys can fuck off. And good for you for that. But you see that they've kind of left you alone now, right? They because can't. I do this. Because <laughs> I because I can say things like this yeah. about it. and Because I, I, it, it makes sense. Yeah. And because when other people hear about it that are rational people, they go, what? What's happening? Wait a minute. That's a guy? Yeah. She was a guy for 30 years? Yeah. Like, that's not right. And m the vast majority of people who even support trans rights, including friends of mine who are trans, mm -hmm. were with me on this. Mm -hmm. They're like, yeah, that's crazy. Have you heard the term TERF? Am I uh, surf and TERF? TERF, no. no. TERF as in T-E-R-F. It's no. trans exclusionary radical feminist. So this is a new slur that's being used against women who will say... Trans women are not women because they were not born women. Wow, trans exclusionary radical feminists. So, so that's you a, would kind of be a turf in this situation because you're advocating for women and yes. the safety of women and saying that people who are born male but identify as female are but, not the same as people who are born female. Yes, but that doesn't mean that I'm discriminatory. No, but See, it's, it's a word that they use to try and discredit you. Good luck. <laughs> Have fun with that. I don't care. See, this no, is the I problem. Know. But the, the thing about this is I don't care because I really don't have any hate in my heart. Mm -hmm. And I don't have any discrimination in my heart. Like I don't I think most nothing... of us do. Well, I right. can't speak for everybody. Some, some do, but... Some do, I'm sure. I'm sure if you were... Like, if you have a thousand people and a hundred of those people are a fucking asshole to you, it's going to feel like a lot of people, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're a trans person and you're, you're... I mean, I've seen horrific things written to trans people online. I've seen it. Mm -hmm. I've seen it. I understand that there's real discrimination. Yeah. But I understand that you have to understand, or you have to appreciate who your actual allies and who, people who are rational people who actually care about you mm -hmm. and who disagree with you on one very particular thing. And this is the only place where I disagree. It's combat sports. Mm -hmm. And it's because it's my area of expertise. Yeah. I've been doing it since I was a kid. Like, you can't tell me that the, there, there's not differences. I've watched men and women fight my whole life. I know there's a difference. And I know that from talking to endocrinologists and people who are experts in the human anatomy that there's just physiological differences that are insurmountable. Mm -hmm. They just are. I've seen men and women hit the bag. It's a very different thing. Yeah. 
I mean, I get where people are coming from, the people who are upset by this, because I think by acknowledging someone that someone was not born the sex that they identify as, it's almost like saying, pointing out to them that they're different. But they are different. Well, yeah. They but, are different. But I can see how that can be upsetting for someone who identifies as the opposite sex. <sighs> yeah. You know what? I can see how it's upsetting if you're short <laughs> and you want to identify as being tall. Mm -hmm. You know, what if I wanted to pretend that I was seven feet tall? And you'd be like, Joe, you're five eight. I'm like, <laughs> are you an asshole? Why are you saying I'm a five eight? But you are. So if I say you're a trans woman, which means you're a born a man, you have a Y chromosome. Mm -hmm. You're like, well, you're a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. How are you pointing that out? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what you are. Yeah. It's not that you're negative. Are you? Are people who are dwarves? Are is that? Is it evil to say that a dwarf is a dwarf or mm -hmm. a little person or whatever whatever phrase you want to use? Are we supposed to acknowledge? that there's an issue? Mm -hmm. Like if someone is born with a handicap, are you supposed to, is that a fact? Are you allowed to discuss it as a fact? If you have autism, mm -hmm. am I allowed to bring up the fact that you are on the spectrum? Mm -hmm. Or am I supposed to ignore it? Yeah. Is it discrimination if you talk about reality? If someone has a deformity, are you allowed to discuss it? Or is it discrimination to discuss reality? Because what are we doing with our language? What are we doing with the way we describe the actual things that are that exist in the world and if we're not describing them in accurate terms because we're trying to somehow or another stop people from getting hurt feelings what are these feelings based on mm -hmm. these delusional perceptions of reality and why are we reinforcing these delusional perceptions of reality because it seems to me that this kind of language and this kind of exclusionary the, 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 the inability to use certain words and the inability to describe things accurately correctly and in many cases, scientifically, it hurts everybody. Yeah, I agree with that. I don't think facts themselves are hateful. I think people who use facts to justify discrimination, that's where the problem is. And that's where the efforts should be going. Because when you start to deny facts, where does that leave you? Where do you draw the line in that case? Absolutely. But I think it's, there's something that's kind of cool about it, that there are trans people. And what's cool about it is that the world is weird. You know, and I'm I'm not happy that they get a lot of hate, but I'm kind of happy that they exist. Mm -hmm. I wish they could just be women. I wish you could just mm -hmm. like hit a switch and you really wish you were born a woman. Bam, you're a woman. Yeah. But I suspect that even if you could do that, some people would rather just be trans. Some people would li like there's mm -hmm. a lot of people that I know that are trans and also have dicks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they want to keep the dick. Yeah. And they're like, OK. Like, what's going on here? And you, you, do you know that you're transphobic if you're a straight heterosexual male and you're not willing to date a trans woman with a dick? But you know what it is. It's actually a sexual preference for, for men who will date trans women who ret is retaining their penis. That's what it's called in the literature. Mm -hmm. If they decide not to get surgery, it's actually uh, a particular sexual preference. For the people that are attracted to that yeah. particular trans yeah. woman. Yeah, it's called gynandromorphophilia. Whoa. Someone tell Jim Norton. <laughs> Um, nothing wrong with that either. No, nothing. Yeah, nothing wrong with whatever, that either. Do what you do. It. But this is the thing: the difference between a man and a woman, a trans man, a trans woman, and then someone who could actually be a woman who transitions. I think we're going to get to a point within, you know, whether it's a hundred years or five hundred years, where we can use things like the the future version of CRISPR or whatever comes down the line next, mm -hmm. some scientific innovation that's going to allow people to literally transition. 